Hello again and welcome to another 5 minute fly the wing in flight maneuver video. This time I demonstrate the commercial maneuver 8's on pylons. As it's the only ground reference maneuver in the commercial PTS, you'll definitely be demonstrating it for the examiner. The airplane is flown at such a precise altitude and airspeed that a line parallel to the airplane's lateral axis extending from the pilot's eyes appears to pivot on each of the two pylons. Pivotal altitude is governed by the ground speed. It's not the wingtip per se, but rather a line parallel to the lateral axis of the plane that we're sighting. A rule of thumb is to square the true airspeed in knots and divide by 11.3. This chart makes it easy to convert several common airspeeds to the appropriate pivotal altitude. Today we're going to use 100 knots requiring a pivotal altitude of about 900 feet AGL. If we get above our target altitude, the pylon will appear to move ahead of our line. And if we descend below target pivotal altitude, the pylon will seem to move behind our reference line. Now, as long as you hold that altitude and ground speed, you should be able to hold the pylon in place no matter your bank angle. If you get closer to the pylon, you'll have to increase bank angle. This isn't a problem as long as your bank angle doesn't cause variations in your ground speed. And this works pretty well when there's no wind, but with any wind, your ground speed will be changing and you'll have to make constant, small corrections to your pivotal altitude to correct for that changing ground speed. The elevator is the primary control for holding the pylons. Even a slight deviation from the pivotal altitude is going to require a double correction. If you're too high, lower the nose slightly to decrease altitude, and at the same time, this has the dual effect of increasing your ground speed, and a slight climb will reduce ground speed. Keep this in mind when demonstrating the maneuver. I like to remember the adjustment that I need to make with my altitude relative to the pylon. Visualize climbing away from a pylon that's behind you and diving into a pylon that's ahead of you. Well, let's get in the airplane now and try to figure this all out. We have the airplane trim for 100 knots. We're at our pivotal altitude, which we've calculated to be 700 MSL. Remember, the terrain out here is below sea level. And as we come across perpendicular, we pick up our first pylon to the right, and we're looking to keep that lateral axis right off the wingtip, trying to do this coordinated the entire time and not slipping or skidding. If the pylon falls behind the wing, we're going to climb away from it. That means our pivotal altitude got too low, or our ground speed increased, or both. And right now, we're pretty much right on it, to the right. We're halfway through the maneuver to the right. Pretty well coordinated. Not a lot of wind out here today. They do feel a little bit of a gust. I can look at the uh, GPS and get a read on my ground speed and see maybe if I can figure out where the wind's coming from. Right there seems to be about the slowest ground speed. I'm now into the mid-90s, and a low ground speed is going to require a lower pivotal altitude. And sure enough, as the pylon moves in front of me, I need to dive a little bit. That's going to increase my ground speed and lower my pivotal altitude, fixing that problem two different ways at the same time. I'm perfectly coordinated, and here comes the pylon. I've descended about 80 feet, and I'm right on it. I'm coming across my line perpendicular. There's really no straight and level in this maneuver. As I come across my line, I'm going to transfer from the right pylon to the left pylon and pick it up with the wingtip. There's my straight and level about two or three seconds, and here comes my pylon to the left. This is pretty flat ground, and you want to try to pick two pylons that are at the same elevation. That'll make it a lot easier. And try to make them about a half a mile apart from each other. Left pylon is right off the wingtip, but it seems to be moving behind me a little bit. So I'm going to climb just a little bit, and magically I'm now at about 720 feet. The pylon has come back to the wingtip perfectly coordinated, so that all looks pretty good. It's possible this terrain down here is a little higher than it was on the other pylon, or my ground speed is a little higher. And if I did it as well as this on my check ride, hopefully the examiner would say, that's good enough, let's go do some landings or do something else. Keep in mind it is a ground reference maneuver at the heart of it all, so keep looking for other traffic and Obviously, terrain and obstacles in your way. Pretty flat out here today. So now as I come across, I'm going to fly straight and level for just a couple of seconds. 
pick up my pylon off to the right. And there's my pylon to the right. And the maneuver's complete. When practicing eights on pylons, you want to enter at an altitude and airspeed that results in a bank angle of approximately 30 to 40 degrees at the steepest point. Be sure to hold each pylon using pivotal altitude, avoiding slips and skids. If you seem to be holding the pylon but the ball is out of the cage, well that's no good. You should be coordinated throughout the entire maneuver. Go out, practice, have fun, fly safely, and I'll see you again next time for another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video.